Good afternoon, guys. It's me, Alex, your sassy dispatch girl, and I wanted to share my excitement with you. I know you're probably enjoying your weekend and maybe looking at this beautiful snow outside if you are in Chicagoland, or maybe you're lucky enough to have sun and palm trees. Uh, maybe you're already sleeping because you are out of USA, but we were so busy today because we had our new class started uh, in the morning. I had 21 students in a class from different states, different backgrounds, different ethnicity, different countries even. We had people from uh, three or four different countries joining us to learn how to dispatch. It was intense class. And I'm so thankful to all of my students that they survived, they did not give up on me, and they are gonna be working on their homework. Because our next class is going to be on Wednesday. They just have two, three days to comprehend all this information, to practice and get ready. But why I am so excited? Well, guys, you know me, I love to meet new people. I love to see improvement and this class I have such a different different group and everybody is unique but all of them are intelligent they all bright and they have that goals they are willing to take that extra step to success because not everybody can sign up for classes not everybody is willing to uh, waste their Saturday and study. Not everybody's gonna put an extra thing under their belt. That's why we have people who succeed and people who just are there. So if you decide to become dispatcher, we will make sure you know this because even after today, my students already know how to set up a uh, uh, so how to set up uh, carriers uh, and brokers. They've been working on the setup agreements. As a homework, they're gonna receive the real packets and they're gonna be practicing. After today, they already know the difference between authorities. Who is a motor carrier? Who is a common carrier? Who is a household carrier? Who is a broker for property except household goods? They already know that. They know the difference for insurance coverage. They know the requirements. They have optional policies. They know so many things after just four hours of the class. Yes, their heads are spinning. It's so much information. But after class, they're gonna receive the PDFs where they can still reread. They're gonna receive extra videos to help them to refresh some of the things. And also they're gonna have quizzes. So they need to challenge themselves and make sure they are getting information correct. But they already know who is a shipper, who is a receiver, what kind of shippers and receivers we have. What kind of appointments can we have? First come, first serve, uh, appointment window 24 7, strict. Wow, all those things, right? They already have been hearing today my conversation with a TQL and they were witnessing spot market because today is Saturday, day before Valentine's. Everybody wants to stay home, right? We want to stay with people who we love and not that many carriers want to go on the road today. Plus, we have the weather conditions. We have a lot of snowstorms going on, especially in Chicago. That's why we were witnessing the spot market for today because they were paying six to six thousand five hundred for one on one load from Chicago to Connecticut. Thousand miles, six thousand five hundred, not bad, right? But is it happening every day? No, it's not. Is it gonna be the same price on Monday? Not. Probably maybe tomorrow because people still don't want to leave their houses. It's still going to be snowing. But today it was a spot market. So you need to know the difference. Regular prices, market prices, spot market. How far is our truck? 
What is the difference between solo? What is the difference when it's team drivers? What is the difference if you have a different equipment, right? Driveman, reefer, step deck. After one class, my students already putting it all together. And hopefully I'm gonna see some comments because I advise everybody to add me as a friend for at least now for the class because they need to make sure they listen to extra information, they watch uh, videos on YouTube channel, on my uh, Facebook uh, page, business page, but I am very, very pleased with all my students. And unfortunately, I would like to apologize for few people who could not sign up because we have deadlines and registration is open for our March class. We're going to have two classes, March 7th. It's going to be Sunday only class. And then we're going to have March 8th, our express class. Guys, registration is going to close on February 28th. If you're not going to submit your payment, your registration, you will not be added to the class because my students are pre-studying. We don't have the luxury of uh, uh, taking classes for two months or three months. So of course, I could have done this, but then the price would be way higher and you would not be speeding up the process of getting that job or maybe fixing some uh, issues you have already in your company. Anyway, I am uh, very pleased how fast and how big we are growing. And I appreciate the reviews. I appreciate sharing my um, advertisement. I appreciate you giving the um, feedbacks because I am improving. I am learning with my students. My students are the best. I love you all. Happy holidays. We love you in Dispatch Training Center. Share the love, share the knowledge, share the education. Please educate yourself. Always yours, Alex. Love you all. Tell me the plan. You are a dispatcher now. Tell me, are you going to make just one posting to nowhere? Like, let's say your truck is in Dallas, Texas. And he tells you, Liz, I trust you. Uh, just find me the load. What do you think the smart way to do? Um, make several posts if he doesn't mind going um, different areas. So I'll post the truck. And why, why is it important? Because you could say, well, it's easier, right? Let's just post Dallas to anywhere, right? But guys, when you post Dallas to anywhere, the broker's not really going to call you because they don't want to deal with the truck who is not sure where he wants to go. So if the broker has load, let's say, from Dallas, from Dallas to Chicago, do you think he's going to call you with trucks for anywhere or he's going to call... Uh, trucks which posted go back to that area, go back to Midwest, right? Because he knows that guy has a plan. Post your trucks. People who have certain area are going to go first. So if you guys going to be posting anywhere, you're always going to be on the bottom. Plus, hello, my. Plus, also, when we were posting, you guys, let's say, start seven in the morning. You post your truck. Should you delete and repost because just refreshing it's just gonna refresh postings but not your truck so i want you to write it down i want you to delete and post them again or copy and post because seven o'clock if you are early bird right richard is gonna be so responsible probably gonna start posting his trucks at five in the morning right richard he's like i don't sleep till nine o'clock like maria so he starts, well, his trucks are going to be five o'clock. Boom, 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 boom. By 11 a.m., he's already here, Richard, right? If you do not delete or copy and paste again, your truck's going to be all the way in the bottom. So that's why brokers, they're not going to scroll down because they're busy as we are, right? So they're just going to call the new trucks because... If you and the, your truck is gonna show that it was posted five hours ago, so logically they're gonna think, well, probably this guy forgot just take it off the board, right? 
like when we do and look at the posting that this was posted 23 hours ago, the chances it's still available, very slim. They uh, has a driver and he's like, well, I need to keep running and I live on the East Coast, but he's in Phoenix. So what can she do? Tell me the zones because yes, he lives in Philadelphia, but he can go to surrounding states and then oh, dead head or you can do the short load. So by uh, zones, what are we going to put? What are we going to put by zones? Z1. Z1. Okay. Z1. What else? Z0, Z2. Z0, Z2. Okay. So let's see. Now, do you have more options for him? Not really. You know why? Because we posted. From Phoenix, if you can't find much load. No, because we posted for today. Oh. Last minute. So look, uh, now on Monday, you have six exact matches. Pay attention here, guys. So 53 total searches, that doesn't mean that it is for Monday. And it doesn't mean that it is for Z0, Z1, Z2. So here you go. You have this. We have reefer, but we are booking when or reefer load. What are we going to pay attention to? Wait, 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 wait okay. and pallet, uh, how they palletize. So if it's double stack, that's why you're going to ask them. Is it going to be single stack or double stack? Write it down. If it's a reefer and you're going to take dry load, you're always going to make sure because double pallets will ruin your shoots. It's not going to fit and you're going to damage. And believe me, the person who loading, they do not care. Space saver. Space saver. Because space saver reefer is going to have the same opening. For the guys who are going to be working with the reefer, if you guys look into buy equipment, it's better to look for safe spavers uh, reefer because you're gonna be able to take uh, dry load and you're not gonna have to worry about it. Total, we have 140 exact matches. What does it mean F or R? See, so I told you click on the highest rate. Uh, Maria, did we already understand that highest rate does not mean that it is the best load? Yes. We make that clear, guys. When you trying to do this, and that's it. Oh my God, this is a high spend. That doesn't mean that it's a best load because we still have to do. We still have to look at the miles, right? So miles are gonna make a difference. We still have to do in commodities and all other things. How important is to check credit score? Very. Most important. Not only on here, right? Right. With the factoring company. Yes. How many of you, we were trying to book the load, right? And with our, here they had 100, they had 96, but with our factoring, they were not. It was approved. like a C. Okay. So that step's going to be uh, one while you dial in. And of course, guys, you have to multitask. You have to do all the steps while the phone ringing, right? Right, Maria? Otherwise, otherwise the, the load's going to disappear. First yes. question where is it? Pick up? What time is the pickup? Right? Please write it down. This is going to be there. Is, of course, is it still available? Can I get details? What time is it picking up? The moment you see that the city changes, right? How many times did we see that they posted in Chicago, but it's not picking up in Chicago. It's picking up in Green Bay. Area. The moment you see in front of your eyes that he is telling you different city, you cannot continue conversation. You have to say, okay, can you give me a second? I need to change my map. So what is the zip code for pickup, right? Mm -hmm. What is the zip, zip code for delivery? We cannot keep talking because you guys are gonna get lost until you see the map. Because if he switches on you, uh, Brittany, and now your head is 150 miles, you need to know your ETA, right? Because mm -hmm. being 10 miles away and 150 miles, it's a big It's part, different. Right? We're not flying and we are still on EOD and we may be unloading, loading, right? We don't mm -hmm. have that magic empty truck who is already, in, you know? So that has to be, and you have to take your time. And if they're going to start pushing you, you say, well, unfortunately you posted different cities. I need to prepare the map. I am a professional dispatcher. Because professional dispatcher, without seeing the map, without seeing the changes, are not going to keep going for how much. Okay? So that's going to be first step. If 
They, so you look at the map, you open the details right there in your head. You need to know what, Irina, don't you need to know what time do they uh, unloading, right? You need to know, are they already Sorry. empty? Are they already in the process? Because if you book it for tomorrow, you're going to open rate confirmation and make sure, well, he's supposed to deliver at 7 a.m. So you're going to know he's going to be 7 a.m. in uh, New Jersey, Newark, New Jersey. Well, he's a drive hand. So give him two. It's realistic. So ETA. Okay. We got that. You got pickup. You got a transit. When they're going to tell you delivery, what are we going to look when we look at the map? What are we going to be thinking? Transit, right? And transit is going to be in logistics in what? Uh, in miles time. or we are talking about days? Time. Days, hours. Days, right? Because when we just want to see mileage, that's, the, that's distance. It's not transit. Because even I pick up loads today in Chicago, right? And I have to deliver to Indiana two days later. It's 200 miles, right? But the transit is three days. And um, Richard, do you think transit is important? Yes. Why? Because if, it, if it's only 200 miles away and it's three days, you're losing two days worth of transit or two but days. But they're giving you five bucks a mile. They give you thousand mm dollars. -mm. You calling your uh, guy and say, well, I book you five bucks a mile. Everybody has 250, 270 a mile. You have five bucks a mile. But you're unless losing out on those two days. Unless he's doing a reset, 34 hour reset. Unless he has to do reset. Mm -hmm. Unless he's okay with it. But also guys, if it's maybe dry van, don't ever do that with reefers. You don't want any reefer commodity sit somewhere mm -hmm. for three days because the mm -hmm. reefer can break down. So you're mm -hmm. not gonna play that game. Maybe with flatbed, maybe today is, it can work, Richard, let's say he's in Chicago, right? So today is Saturday and it's two pallets for flatbed. He's gonna pick up right now, gonna take him half hour and he needs to deliver in Indianapolis Monday morning. Yes, 200 miles. He's going to go home. He's going to barbecue Monday morning early. He's going to, so it can be a great load, right? All you need to do, you need to understand commodities, the day of the week and driver's needs. But if you guys are going to do this crap in the middle of the week, just because you cannot find a load, then don't dispatch, please. Just don't dispatch. Go work somewhere else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's 21, 21 miles. No, it's in a day. That's like a day and a half. Day and a half. Wow, Maya, you have a boy in the truck? Maybe I mean, it's 24 hours in a day. So I see 31 it's 24 hours in a day. <laughs> it's three that's, days. That's for, that's for sure, yes. This is a statement. This is a fact. <laughs> Well, so we can only we can only drive six hundred and we can drive how okay for how many hours can driver legally drive? Yes, I mean some heroes they would they can drive twenty four hours nonstop, okay, but legally eleven hours. Eleven hours. So okay. let's say let's say our speed limit is sixty, right? So without traffic, without loading and unloading, that's why realistically you you can do. So this was a good example, girls. Yes, it seems like one day and a half, but we are trucks, right, Maya? Mm -hmm. So we have to sleep. We have to do PTI. We have uh, those rules. We have to unload and load. So Maya, two, is it two days? Look Wait, one more day and tell me, and tell me if I'm loading on Monday and I got mm -hmm. loaded at 3 p.m. in Chicago, realistically with one guy solo, legally, mm -hmm. We're not talking okay. illegally, legally. Right? Three days. Is it three days? Thursday morning, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you're going from Los Angeles and you bring in produce to Bronx Market. Okay. What is the transit here? Mm. What is the transit now? You say Monday, you pick up Monday. In Los Angeles, you had two, three picks. By the time you got loaded, it's already midnight on Monday. Four days. Like four and a half days. 
hour and a half. So when right. is on Friday. Friday. On Friday mm -hmm. or Saturday. Friday, probably noon or later at night or Saturday morning. Saturday morning. And Maya, if you were coming before, before Los Angeles, let's say you came there from Dallas, Dallas, Texas. I went to Los Angeles. You got so excited. You booked me that load for 10 grand. You told me that, you know, I started on Saturday. I pick up on Saturday. I deliver Monday because you great dispatcher. Monday, you book me. I'm going to Bronx. So can I be in Bronx on Friday? No. No. Why not? I don't want just no. And nobody's helping her. Why not? 22.33. So, Farouk, mm. help her out. How many hours do we have in a cycle before we have to do mandatory reset? 70 mm. hours. Seven. Seven zero, yeah. And it's look like seven days. So we can make it if, if you just start from Dallas. We can make it if in Los Angeles, we're not gonna pick up two, three peaks, right? And it depends how we were loading and unloading and it depends on what? On weather, on traffic, right? Exactly, it yeah. It will be really, really close. So probably not. You will hit that reset for 34 hours, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So when you book that produce load, right? That raspberries or blueberries, which spoil so fast. Don't you think you have to think about it? Uh -huh. The broker is going to say, Maya, where is the truck? And you're like, well, he's doing reset in Ohio. He's almost there, but he has to wait 34 hours. And I'm like, what do you mean, Maya? You booked the load. You told us he's going to be on Bronx market. Well, whose fault is this? Bronx uh -huh. brokers? Brokers, brokers don't really, dispatchers. They don't know your hours. Mm -hmm. So that's why, guys, when you're gonna be working from cost to cost loads, you need to understand this, right? So all he had to do reset in California and then keep going, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe instead of going all the way to Bronx, she should have find him load going maybe to Ohio, right? Maybe to beginning of Pennsylvania, right? To cut the miles, yes? Right. Yeah. Okay. So we understand that those hours of operations are important to know. We call them what? What do we call them, Liz? H O S. Hours of service. service. Hours of service. Well, potatoes, most of the time. Archana, what does it mean, bulk potatoes? Um, they're gonna be full. it's like a big a big amount at one time so they it's just gonna be load, thrown in there loaded with a dirt oh. so let's think about it Farouk how easy it is to find wash out of the trailer in New York City in uh, Philadelphia or Delaware or Pittsburgh how easy it is after you're gonna bring those bulk potatoes somewhere right to uh, wash your trailer. Yeah, it's hard to find any, Fox. even like a parking or like washing or, yeah. No fuck. So yeah. that's why guys, price can sound really good, but believe me, not worth it. We have a lots of population, but we don't have enough land. It's overpopulated. So we don't have places for manufacturing. We don't have places to build a huge pumpkin farm and raise a pumpkin in the Central Park, right? Let's do that instead of Central Park. No, we cannot. I don't think the farmer can afford to do that. He's not going to make enough money on a pumpkin. Uh, fruit crops are blueberries and cranberries. Uh, and to a lesser degree, apples, peaches, strawberries are also important uh, crops in New Jersey. Uh, their top five agriculturals are greenhouse nurseries, blueberries, dairy products, chicken eggs. Livestock is um, some is uh, chicken and some dairy um, milk, things like that. Okay. Nursery load, when we're going to be booking that, most of the time it's not going to be multi-pick, multi-drop, but let's say it's one pick, one drop. What is important with the nursery loads, guys? Is it be how it's loaded? Driver, driver assist. Is there going to be any driver assist? Driver assist. And 
is that going to be palletized? Usually it's going to be floor loaded. So if it's going to be, you know, even if it's a rose bushes, right? Are they going to be on those little cards with the wheels, right, Richard? So if we have that, what do you need to make sure you have? Low, low tracks, right? Yeah. Each tracks you need secure because they're going to roll all over. So with the nursery loads, always ask how it's going to be loaded and what kind, because if it's just a tree, Christmas tree, I mean, yes, they just stuck them. Not you, even if they fall down, they're not gonna damage. But if it's a rose bushes, right? So most of the time, you do not want to take nursery loads without e tracks. You want to secure few times. They put like a quarter secure. Put another four or five pallets secure because it's moved. Driver assist. So Richard, broker tells you, yes, we're gonna pay. $50 per stop or $25. Oh no, it's already included in the price. Can you make that decision? Without, no. without driver? No. No. I need to ask your driver because even though Archana is the owner of the tr uh, trucking company, I am the owner, it is my truck. The, it is a company driver. Can Archana tell him, well, that's it. I booked the load, it's seven drops. And you need to unload. I'll give you 20. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do it. Even if you pay me 100, I don't want to do it because it is hard. I am driving, right? So in this case, Archana need to ask the driver. And if he's okay, she's going to ask, how much would you like to get compensated? And then she needs to negotiate maybe $75 per and see what actually it is. But guys, it's not that easy to unload hand by hand, nor uh -uh. okay? So please, you need in this case, what? one-on-one, -on -one, no touch load, write it yeah. down. That's what it means when they advertise it's nursery, but they're going to say one-on-one, -on -one, no touch because they already know that experienced dispatcher understands that I am not doing driver assist and I'm not doing, well, it's just seven drops on East Coast, really? Just seven drops, you know, all over East Coast. It's not that easy. He is a major producer of milk, eggs, and poultry, as well as fruits, including peaches, grapes, cherries, and apples. Um, they also, uh, they're big in ice cream and sausages. Um, their agriculture basics, um, there's about 59,000 farms in Pennsylvania, 9 million acres cultivated, um, 18th highest income by state from agriculture, and one of the nation's leading milk producers. And when we talk about the dairy product, eggs, milk, uh, all the yogurts, everything else. First, we know that it's gonna be fresh, chilled, frozen, but what we need to always make sure we do is with the reefers, wash out receipt will be required. Why? Because who is controlling us? FDA. Federal Drug Administration and Food Administration because of what they are protecting public. They don't want to make sure that our reefer are not going to uh, affect, for example, milk or eggs because he had a raw meat, right? Because of all the diseases or uh, salmonella or uh, E. coli when we have the fresh salad. So we need to make sure that reefers are going to be what? Food grade trailer, Liz, what is the meaning of food grade trailer? Um, clean, free of odors, no holes. Um, no holes, right? No debris. Deal with Wegmans without appointment, okay? So that's why we need to know the distribution centers. Home Depot is easy, Ross and Zivi, Starbucks is easy. Easy distribution centers. Good job. Besides, what time is a pickup? When is a delivery? How heavy is it? What other three questions we need to ask? Um, dimensions, right? Yes. What three dimensions we're going to ask? The how high, how point. wide, how long, right? Yes. Okay. And we have legal dimensions. I guys send you that. You need to make sure. So in case if it's an oversized load, in this case, Liz, what else do you need to do as a dispatcher? Make sure we need, have the required permit. Permits. You will need to get permits, right? Have probably straps, chains, right? Tarps, right? So we need to know. So girls, you're going to write down, this guy has 
six straps. He has uh, five tarps. He has all this. You need to know before you talk because do you think it's so easy to go and get it and buy it? It's not cheap. No. And you cannot drive around to look. And so you need to know specialty equipment. I'm sure that they have. So you're going to put satellite and you're going to see and you're going to make it bigger and you see, well, this facility has docks so I can still load and unload, right? Mm -hmm. But this was, so they have just two, and it's so tight, but some, my, lots of them, they not gonna have dogs. You have to load and unload on this street. Do you think it's easy? No. Mm -hmm. no it's Alex, this is, um, Alex, this is a lot of detail to go into, and I understand this, but I just had a recent situation where um, I got a, a load we had watermelons and they needed to be re-delivered and it was we were in Georgia and they said they need to be re-delivered in New Jersey. So we ended up re-delivering it to New Jersey. Then we needed to get a load out of New Jersey and they made it you're right, they really said, Oh, this is it's not that far, it's easy loading, unloading, it's easy to get in and out. Drivers do it all the time. And my driver got there and he was completely shocked because there was no way to get out of there. But I I don't know. That's a lot of research to be able to do when you're booking a load. Is it, is it, you just get to this to the point where you're experiencing it and then you know that check it out or there's just not enough time when you're booking a load to do all this research. So. Yes, because you're going to remember anytime you go to New York, New Jersey, you have to do it. Okay. That takes two minutes to look at the Google maps and see the facility. And if you did the mistake, you'd better cancel that load. We're doing this. So when you hear twins, Bronx, this, you're gonna remember. Well, she told me, yeah, I don't I don't accept you to sit here and know every shipper and receiver, but it is gonna be your duty to do this if you want to succeed. And it's no mm -hmm. and it's no mm -hmm. sorry, Maya, and it's no excuse our channel for you to tell, well, I did not have enough time. And right. Right. You should know, because if you're going to Arkansas or whatever, you don't really have to worry about it. So that's why we're doing this, so you know this area. So when you're going to be dealing with East Coast, you guys need to do it with each load, unless you're going to start delivering to the same facilities all the time, which is not going to really happen if you're a small carrier. So yes, duty of your dispatcher and you're going to be doing this right away. And it doesn't take that long, right? You put the receiver and you look and physical, especially now that it used to be hard. We used to call and ask, do you have a dog? And what other things we can do is, we can also call the receiver and ask, do you guys have a dog? How's your receiving, right? Because yes, you don't want to take a chance, guys. What, what are we going to understand? It's better to stay without load than take a load which brings you cargo claim damage for your trucks it's gonna mm -hmm. cost you way more it's mm -hmm. better lose a day it's the same as for future owners i want you to remember this it's better for you to have trucks sitting than putting unqualified driver to this truck in the end of the day you're gonna lose more money with unqualified driver taking your truck than Stay in truck sitting and you're waiting for better uh, driver because you're going to lose more money. And people like, oh, I don't want my truck sitting. Let's just put, you need to realize that. Okay. Insurance and banking, motor vehicle assembly, uh, steel production, agriculture. And, uh, and there's a top top 10 uh, higher agriculture products is soybeans, uh, corn, uh, dairy products, uh, chicken eggs, hogs, uh, cattle, um, floor culture, weir, turkey. Living in Ohio, you are in a great spot. It's the same like living in Chicago and being in the rocking business, right? Because you are in the middle. You can go to East Coast. You can go to Midwest. You can go up. So it is a really good position. So drivers can start working on Monday make a good money, go uh, to Tuesday East Coast, come back uh, and be Friday, Saturday home, right? Look at this, we have all the bridges, right? And now look at that, look at that pure truck. Oh, oh boy. 
Do you yeah. really think he can really make tunes or deliver? And now no. we have all this car park and all this facilities. They do not have dogs because it was an older part of Chicago, used to be original where they used to sell the fresh chicken, right? Fresh chicken, whatever. So some companies stayed there, but what happened? Right here, Google bought a uh, few blocks and they put a huge facility. So all those young kids who work in the Google, they start living here. So they start knocking out the old places and putting condos, right? But between two condos, then you have a little guy who still has a meat processing facility and you need to deliver there. So please remember in Chicago, full ton market, you don't want to go there really. Okay, we're gonna divide, we're gonna divide uh, Wisconsin again, same as in Michigan, upstate Wisconsin and central Wisconsin. So when we talk in central, it's Milwaukee, Madison, right? When we talk in upstate, it's a Green Bay. Yeah, great show right there. So it's Green Bay, Wisconsin, next to the upper state. And that's where most of the stuff is, okay? The cheese production, Appleton, Green Bay, Schwano, uh, and we're gonna talk about it. So you tell first and then I, I will need to show them the map. So tell us, what, what is there? Uh, okay, let me see. In 2019, Wisconsin gross state product was 349 billion and was making it 21st among the USA state. Agriculture Wisconsin, as you mentioned, produced about a quarter of America's cheese, leading in the nation cheese production. About most of the agriculture commodities in the states all over. This is where Minnesota is. Um, and um, so if we have if we have chicken in Arkansas, Mississippi, if we have cows in Nebraska and Oklahoma, Kansas, what number one bird we gonna have in Minnesota? Turkey. Turkey. Sarah Lee production. That's where they have turkey. They have those farms for turkey. So before the Thanksgiving, guys, you do wanna be. In Minnesota, they're going to be paying crazy money for that frozen turkeys, fresh turkeys, all that, and all the lunch meat, right? Foods that come out of it. So sheep, you get additional uses, our bones, horn tubes, all these little uh, things that come out of um, use of sheep. And then poultry is uh, main use of meat and eggs. And then corn, additional uses are corn oil, corn starch, sweeteners, flour. So look, cheese. just right there. We have corn, but look how many commodities we have, right, Archana? Yeah. Look, we have dry commodities because we have uh, corn oil. Then we have, let's say, potato chips. I mean, whatever chips, corn, whatever, so, uh, syrup. Then, so just because they have one, you can make so many different commodities for different types of trailers, right? That's right. why Minnesota is also strong because they have all those things there. The worst receiver ever. They do take five, eight hours, always at night. Unify, Unify is another one, the second one. Everything else, you can deal with it. So from this two, you're gonna pay attention. If you hear Unify, if you hear Target, you're gonna know that unloading is gonna take four, six hours. Why do you think, Archana? Because we're gonna bring so many different kinds kinds of a freight on a one truck it's the same as a dollar right. general so dollar right. general cvs pharmacy uh target it's gonna take forever because they're gonna have thousands and thousands of and they're gonna count it until they're gonna release your truck right. have permit to enter oregon so if we don't have annual permit which costs you eight dollars but you need to have account you will call and what you're gonna tell him one more time, I wanna make sure you're clear. They're gonna ask you, when are you gonna be, which road are you taking? So Nargis gonna tell, we are taking 84. We're gonna be coming from Nampa and going through Ontario, Oregon. And we're gonna take 84, continue on 84, and we're gonna deliver in Portland. They're gonna calculate the miles. She's gonna pay over the phone. They're gonna send her permit. To get permit, she needs to have what? Plate number, tell them it's going to be 80,000 on a weight, five axles, 
and win number, right? Yes. And then she's going to send it to whom, Nargis? To driver. He needs to print it before he enters Oregon. There's a lot of wineries, potatoes, blueberries, and pears uh, seasonally. What is Portland famous for? Uh, well, w w wine too. I don't know, a lot of things. The beer. It's a brew, it's a breweries, yes. Breweries, so beer, right? Beer mm -hmm. production and lots of wine. Logistics Oregon has 23 ports providing a variety of recreational, commercial, and economic services to residents and businesses in Oregon and beyond. The port of Coos Bay is one of Oregon's largest ports, moving 1.5 million to 2 million cargo throughout the harbor every year. According to the U.S. Census data, that means that the port of Coos Bay is the second largest port in terms of vessel shipping weight in the state following the port of Portland. Uh, major logistic companies in Oregon include PDX Freight Logistics, Bridgetown Trucking, and AIT Worldwide Logistics. Major, ship, major shippers include Cascades, uh, Jeldwed, Frito-Lay, NA, uh, Nike, and Cummings. It's pretty much all season. Um... In the spring, we do um, Ardra Coke, we do Fuddle Heads, we do uh, Rhubarb. In the summer, we do Basil, Blackberry, Blueberry. In the fall, we do Brussels sprout, that's, that's, a, that's a vegetable, chili, and chopped cherries, something like that. And in the winter, we do celery roots, we do grapefruit. And we, and we do, um, what about oranges? We do oranges, we do cherries. Oh, we do so much. <laughs> what about the wine? The yeah. wine, yeah, yeah. We, we have wine. The wine is in, in Northern, that's in Northern California. We do have a lot of wine in Northern California. Good rain season, the California market takes over. It's like, because now everybody's taking produce loads, right? No, so now drive and everything else has to come up also in price. So that's why dry, dry van guys, they're like, please, California rain. So their load's going to go up as well. Because if it's not go up, do you think I want to take the produce load of spinach when I can just take dry wine with a reefer for the same money and don't have liability? Yes, I will just take the wine load, right? So that's why... California gets affected by the rain. So hopefully, Diana, we have enough rain right now? You know, you know what's been raining all week and it's been coming down real hard. So it's it's real pretty right it's, now. It's, it's really it's pretty. It's looking pretty good this year. So I yes, think uh -huh. this year is gonna be unusual uh, with markets. So we're gonna see those spot market. Also, what are we gonna see? Let's see, Diana, what do we have? We have San Diego, right? Yes, we have um, we have San Diego. But we what, have what San Diego gonna be in charge of of imports from Mexico. All yes, import mm -hmm. come from America. Plus, we have the ports, right? Los Angeles, San Diego. Mm -hmm. So we all the Chinese manufacturing come to California, right? So that's why we do have team loads for dry freight goods, and especially when are they really paying? D, think about it. When do you go shop? Before Christmas, Black Friday? Yes. Right? Even if you don't have money in America. If we don't have money, we shop, still go, right? go looky. <laughs> so, we're talking about spot market, right? So yes. look at this. Before Thanksgiving, we know the Black Friday. All our reefers are going to go where? To Minnesota because we need to make sure they have a turkey. Then they're going to hit Oregon, the reefers, flatbeds, because we need Christmas tree. But also they're going to hit Los Angeles port because everybody needs to buy the crap we don't really need, but we're going to buy it anyway, mm -hmm. right? Right. Some manufacturing industry, uh, they have high technologies and they manufacture computer and electronic products, aerospace, and other transportation uh, equipment, food, beverages, and tobacco. I didn't know that. Fabricated metal products, chemicals, non-metallic mineral products, machinery, motor vehicles, and parts and primary metals. Um, 
the most important manufactured goods are computers and electronic uh, components. They have some big industries, these names, microchip, all that, those names of manufacturing. Uh, go somewhere Whoa. underground. You see the trucks go all the way here. Do you see this? Mm -hmm. So when Maya's gonna send her truck and boom, he disappears. He I cannot see his own logbook. She's trying to call him. No, whatever. So mm -hmm. what is this? Kansas City, Missouri has a lot of underground facilities. Right? And water mounts, it is gonna move to Lakeland. Lakeland area and or Ocala area. Why is it important to know again, Maria, because Florida is too big, right? So if all produce already in Ocala, right? Would you take the load all the way to Miami? Not really, hmm. because look how much, how much you need to deadhead, empty miles, cheap miles. It's not, you know, look, to all the way to Ocala, if the market moved. That's why you guys all look 339 miles back. Does it make sense? No, no the bicycle though. The whole day. So you will need to check. When you say, when everybody's gonna be telling you, Maria, Florida's paying. You need to check which Florida is paying. Miami, the Immokalee, Ocala, or Jacksonville, because here starts like two weeks. Then it's gonna be two weeks right here in Ocala, Gainesville, and then it's gonna move to South Georgia. Mm. And what, what are we talking about? So water mounds, early water mounds start, all the cabbage pepper, then it's here. And then we have corn season. When is the corn gonna be the highest paying commodity, Richard? Before the 4th of July and Memorial weekend, right? because that's when we pick up. So on Memorial Weekend, all the corn comes from this area, but for Memorial Weekend, it's all already moves to Valdosta and Savannah, because why? Because by that time, Florida will be dead. It's gonna be nothing. They already gonna be over that famous six weeks of produce. Now guys, you did a great job. I'm very proud of this class. You guys, it was a pleasure to meet you all. Thank you so much. And I'll see you soon because I want to make sure I know who you're working for and which company is yours so I can see the progress of this. Okay, it's possible, guys. I can do it. You can do it. We all can do it.